Hey, I'm back out here for my weekly soul-centering practice of working on the Cafe Racer. Let's see if we can put this front suspension together and maybe even get as far as handlebars. Welcome to Urban Monk TV. All right, welcome back. Um, Got to gather up all of the parts I'm going to need for the front end. We've got the bottom of the triple tree. We have the top. Do we? Yeah. There's the top. I need to grab the bolts that I took out to run them on the wire wheel and clean them up. And then somewhere I've got a bag with the bearings. And as you know from last week, we've got newly assembled fork tubes, which could use a little polish since I've been touching them a lot, putting them together. And uh, so just excited to be back out in the garage. Last weekend, I went to Florida to visit my father, who's a bit of a nomadic snowbird now. He's in his mid-80s and uh, has bought an RV, uh, living on an Air Force Base campground in an RV that he bought well, about a year ago and uh, he's having the time of his life just enjoying travel, which is something he's always loved. I love it too. Um, but we went to, we were near Cape Canaveral, so we went to the Kennedy Space Center. And if you guys haven't had a chance to visit this, I highly recommend it. Um, I mean, there are, experiences in life, and I've talked about this on my channel before, there are experiences in life that fill you with a sense of wonder, and as a spiritual practice, it's important to, to do that, to stop and look up at the stars, or to go to a place like the Kennedy Space Center where they put human beings on the moon and brought them back, and now they are working on, and from what I can see, very serious about putting human beings on Mars. And I am all charged up about that. I think, um, well, if you go back to the 1960s, uh, there was an eight-year space race, and really that was spawned out of a time when humanity was very divided. There were two superpowers. There was the United States, and there was the uh, USSR, and they were competing over the ideological minds of uh, the, the world, really. And going to the moon helped bring humanity back together. And um, now, I think we're at another time in our history where there's a lot of divisiveness. And... Uh, I think a mission to Mars would be a really good thing for humanity right now to kind of step back from ourselves a little bit and see a bigger picture. Um, so excited about that. Um, let's get this thing put together. I want to kind of show the parts, lay it out. Here we go. So here's all my parts. You got the bottom and a couple of bolts that clamp that together. I've got the top. These are the two bolts there, and then this one guy goes there in the, uh, you know, that, that ends up up here. Um, what I also need is the bearings and the nuts and washers and uh, cap here, but clearly I didn't clean these up uh, when I took it apart. So first I just need to get out a little kerosene and clean these parts up, or if you have a parts cleaner you can do that. And then of course I've got these guys. 
Hey, I put this out on Instagram, and I would like your guys' opinion too. Um, I've got the choice between going with the OEM dust seals, which I have a new set here because one of mine was all cracked up, but I also have a set of uh, fork gaiters, which I haven't put on here. That, that fits on there. And uh, I like this look, but these are so long that by the time I get the front end lowered, you know, that triple tree is going to be coming down to maybe here. And these just, I think they're going to be pretty scrunched. Um, and does that look, I don't know, maybe we should get it all put together, but leave a comment on what you guys think. Uh, are you more a fan of the stock OEM dust covers or these gaiters for the Cafe Razor look? I haven't made up my mind. Let me just quickly detail the parts here for you. So you have two races, the bottom and the top. They can be identified by the bottom is thinner. The top has this extra, I don't know what to call it, just a little flange here to it. It's, it's thicker. Um, I got to get all the grease cleaned up. Then you've got 18 steel balls. I'll call them bearings. Um, top and bottom, so a total of 36. So I've grouped these into three groups of 10 and I've got six here. So I've counted that I have all my, my balls. Then um, a nut that uh, goes on the top of the steering stem. This is a little rubber cover that covers that thing up when it's all put together. Uh, and then you finally have your top bolt and washer, which I gotta get cleaned up. There's also this little wire uh, retainer for some of the wiring that I held on to uh, that does mount up into the top triple tree so I hung on to that and that's about it let me get these cleaned up another follower on uh, I think it was a subscriber on YouTube I get confused if somebody commented on Instagram or here on the YouTube channel but um, Forgive me, I don't at this moment have uh, this particular person's name or online ID, but they, they said that they appreciated kind of the zen-like atmosphere that I'm loosely maintaining on this channel. But um, I really do believe that there is a, a very large spiritual component to working on motorcycles or frankly cars or anything uh, anything that involves craftsmanship and art. Um, I've quoted this before but actor Rain Wilson who uh, he was in The Office, um, really smart guy, he uh, had a nice quote he said uh, art is like prayer and I really don't see any difference between building a motorcycle and praying. Really. I also don't see any difference between um, acting and praying or performing music and praying or making a drawing or a painting or go on with any number of items that are commonly understood to be art. So, so when you're out here in the garage, there's more going on here than just Urban Monk has a motorcycle obsession, and he does. But when you're riding a motorcycle or working on one and you first fire it up after a long time of working on it, you are filled with that sense of wonder. Um, you know, the gyroscopic forces that keep a motorcycle upright are pretty well-known things in physics, but when you're experiencing them, they're just magic. What keeps this thing upright? How can I lean over like that and not fall down? Um, that's fun, and that's spiritual, and that's my two cents on that. Let me get this stuff cleaned up. Let's put it together. Oh, 
Hey, and speaking of magic, if you want a way to pick up these steel balls when they're soaked in kerosene or whatever solvent you're using, grab one of these magnet parts grabbers if you have one. Of course, that didn't go so well because I just dropped one on the ground. And then on these races, you just want to inspect this surface in here that it's nice and smooth. The bottom one tends to um, potentially have a little tougher time because it's facing up this way. And so if there is any moisture or water that's going to collect, it, uh, it'll collect downward. Mine has the slightest little... Oh, I don't know, pock marks or something, but as I run my pick over these, they're not indented. They are just surface rust. So I'm going to go ahead and use this, but if these were like dented in, then uh, you may want to consider replacing this with a new one. The other option here, of course, is uh, you can get away from this kind of old style of. Uh, bearing assembly and get a tapered bearing set and mount that on. There's uh, probably more than one source to buy that for the GS550. But uh, these are in good enough shape and of course this is budget project so I'm not replacing these. I'm going to use them. I found a good use for that table I built for the engine. bottom. I gotta drop this race down. And then that's a nice tight fit. And uh, I'm just gonna get this heavily greased. Why do I say heavily? Because what I'm uh, hoping to do is to essentially adhere these balls to that race. Uh, you know, this grease is what's gonna make them stick. And I'm going to try to be clean about this and not overdo it. Because I don't want this grease all over my paint. And then just a little grease up on the underside of the race. I don't want to get my head in the way. Now you can't just do the bottom because when you put the triple tree up, the only thing that's going to hold it there uh, is going to be the nut at the top. And if you're going to put the nut on the top, then you're also putting the entire race at the top together. So you got to be ready to do the whole thing. And then the other race. Okay, I've got my balls um, split into two groups of 18. So 18 on the bottom and 18 on the top. And the grease will help them stick there. You say, Urban Monk, what could possibly be relaxing about this? <laughs> it's an activity without a deadline. Which raises the question, if you worked on motorcycles for a living, would that be a zen-like experience? Possibly. Possibly not. It's really 
our perspective that we bring to it, right? Kind of like life in general. Uh, I have something to share on that note. So, for the two years or more that I've been doing this channel, uh, I've been doing it and just funding it from you know, my own personal income. And, uh, but I've had some life changes here recently. I'm having, uh, well, how do I say it? I'm having a difference in values between myself and my employer. And I have put in my notice at work. So uh, finishing out an obligation there that's gonna go for, oh, another month or so. But um, moving on. And so I'm not going to have income here shortly, which has me questioning uh, whether or not I want Urban Monk TV to continue being a self-funded thing. I do have a family to take care of. The other thing that's happening in my life is uh, my wife is having some pretty serious health issues, and I am probably facing some pretty hefty medical bills uh, over the next year or two or indefinitely, I don't know. Um, and so, again, it's got me thinking about Urban Monk TV and how I'm funding this. And so, I'm not announcing any sort of major change there right now, but I am contemplating some uh, ideas like Patreon, or Patreon as many people call it. Um, or uh, you may have noticed that there's now probably some ads running before my videos. I went ahead and let this be monetized. Uh, and. What I'm going to do is any revenue that comes in for this, I will reinvest in the channel and keep that separate. But um, yeah, I don't know how much self-funding I'll I'll continue to do. Yeah, you know, the wonderful thing about a change like losing your job, in this case, I'm I'm walking away. But when you you can look at it from two different perspectives, and this is the point of perspective. Um, one way to look at it is, oh my God, Urban Monk, you lost your income. What are you going to do? The other perspective is, wow, you've got endless possibilities for the future now. You can do anything. Um, that's kind of how I look at it. And uh, every time I, I used to think the old way many years ago when I was a different person. And when I shifted my perspective 180 degrees from what I had been raised with, uh, it, it's amazing the kinds of things that started happening in my life. Um, so, not sweating it, choosing to look at it as a lot of wide open possibility and opportunity. And it is. So I'm excited about it. But I have to be prudent and figure out, hey, how am I paying for things? So, that's, that's that. Let's get back to doing this. And, of course, 18 in the top. Careful as you're going up top, they'll drop down and run through. Not that they won't fall out the bottom, but you want to be capturing them if they do. Let me count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, just kidding, there's 18. So carefully, bring it up, make sure you don't knock any of your balls out on the top as you come up and in, and, oh, and then get your other race, which I put Nice reach. That'll plop down on top of the other balls. And then the nut, which goes with this flange upward. Methinks. I'm actually going to double check that. Could be wrong. And I'm just going to finger tighten it for now. 
Okay. It's held in there. Let me check on the direction of this nut because it's got a flange here that perhaps that goes down. Look at this. Yeah. It does go up because up is the exact diameter of this plastic cap that covers this and protects it from the elements. And you do need this thing intact. Don't skip it because, uh, well, I guess it depends if you plan on uh, riding in the rain ever, which frankly I won't with this bike, but let me clean that up. So we do have this the right direction. The flange goes up. Did I just do that? There's this guy at work, I won't say his name in case he watches the channel, but uh, he always is glass, he wears glasses like me. He always puts his glasses up like this while he's talking to me and I always get a chuckle out of it every time. So here you need a specialized tool. I've got one here that's for a uh, Honda uh, that I worked on in the past and essentially it's just got a little notch in it. You can put it in there and tighten that nut up but this particular one, the notch is too big, so I have a choice. I could grind this down until it fits, uh, because the radius on this is pretty good. Or I've got this other one that I've gathered somewhere that's not the right radius, but it will grab, and I think that's going to be fine. I mean, I just need to snug it up. And uh, so now, the service manual has an interesting specification for this that I'll read to you because I, I thought it was kind of uh, funny. So from the service manual for this nut, while tightening the stem nut with the special tool, turn the stem right and left to feel its heaviness and stop tightening before it becomes too heavy. How's that for exacting specifications? You know, I mean, this is really their best attempt at explaining or articulating the art of motorcycle building. So, you know, you don't want this loose uh, because there is a tremendous amount of force going into these bearings as you think about all the shocks that are coming up through the tire and the wheel uh, and up through the fork stems that essentially this becomes a lever on this point. And uh, there is, there's a lot of stress here, a lot of forces at play. You want it snug, you don't want it so tight that it's heavy. So, you know, I want to feel that there's no play in that, and there isn't, but I want to go a little snugger than that. That's feeling just a little heavy to me, so I'll back it off. There. I think that's it. You might be surprised how loose that feels to you as far as the torque you're putting into it. I mean, obviously there's not a lot of leverage here, but you don't want too much. Oops. You want to just go as when you feel the heaviness starting, then just back off from that a notch. But I would say this, don't, see now I just went woof, and now I'm too loose. You want to finish torquing, you know, in, in the motion of tightening. Don't finish in the motion of loosening. That's it. All right. Top goes down. Oop. Almost forgot. We got our plastic cover. This has a notch in it that I believe is supposed to line up with. I don't know what that's supposed to line up with. 
That's the way I'm choosing to go with it, for better or for worse. Essentially, we just plop that guy down in there. Now, you don't just crank this down and that's your torque. You have a, a bolt that's going to go in here. But we got to get some torque specs for that. And uh, before we tighten that, we will need to draw this together and pull that top triple tree down onto the steering stem all the way. So for right now, all I'm going to do... Oh, that's just on the steering lock. Is just tighten this up to draw it down onto the stem there. But... Um, I'm not going to tighten all this up. In fact, I'm going to back it off a little bit and just keep this top nut loose. There. Because we need to get our fork tubes up in here and get all of this lined up and uh, snug and aligned, which is redundant. So, what are we going to do? Let's get the fork tubes in there. I also need to put this pinch bolt in. Okay, pinch bolts, pinch bolts, steering stem bolt, pinch bolts down here below where you can't see. cautious of uh, right and left here for this bike it's a single disc that's on the left hand side so the fork uh, that has the mounting points for the caliper uh, obviously goes on the left hand side so um, this is my right here. The Roman gods spread apart us. Well, I'll go there for now. My intention is to lower it some. That's one. Let me get the other side. Okay, so help me make a choice here, you guys. Uh, I'm gonna put up a couple photographs. This first one is the bike uh, from the left-hand side showing the gator, and then the second one is the OEM dust cover. Which do you guys like? What's your favorite? Leave a comment below. Um, I don't really know yet where I land on this but interested in what you other monks have to say. So, because I'm undecided on this decision right now, um, I need to essentially stop here. But, if you, I wanna just finish out the concept of putting the front end together. What I would now do, because all of these pinch bolts are loose, is I would mount my front tire and put the axle in and get that snugged up. That will bring all the geometry at the bottom of the bike together. I'm also going to measure these and make sure, like if you're going stock, you want the top of the tubes pretty much flush with the top of the uh, top clamp here. Um, I'm lowering a little bit, so what I'm gonna do is take my measuring calipers and just make sure that the distance that I have here is the same exactly on both sides. But even then, um, I'm gonna wait until I've got the front wheel mounted to start snugging everything up. And uh, that should bring all the geometry into alignment. Then I would tighten up the top pinch bolts and the bottom pinch bolts, this pinch bolt around the steering stem, uh, and then finally the torque, uh, torque this nut. Let me give you the torque specs. So the uh, steering stem bolt, this, this guy, 
is 26 to 37.5 pound feet or 3.6 to 5.2 kilogram meters. Um, you can convert to Newton meters with Google if you need. Um, let's see, front fork tube, that's a steering stem bolt. And then uh, steering stem pinch bolt, this guy is a 11 to 18 pound feet or 1.5 to 2.5 kilogram meters. And then the um, upper pinch bolts on the fork tubes, these guys here and down here are 14.5 to 21.5 pound feet or 2 to 3 kilogram meters. So maybe pause and grab those numbers if you need them. But there's your torque specs for here, here, and here. There's three different ones. So that's going to be it for this episode, you guys. Um, if you like what I'm doing, if you want to become a monk, then subscribe. And you can follow along this build and everything else that I do here in my garage as I seek my inner peace. And um, maybe you will find your own. And give me the thumbs up if you like what I'm doing here. Thanks so much.